cassava, yam, maize, and millets are some of the crops that are being produced in abundance, according to the Agri Ministry. Apart from the issue of post-harvest losses plaguing production of these crops, the ministry says it is also concerned about low quality of yams, which is gravely affecting exports. Ghana, however, is not self-sufficient in rice, tomato, poultry, and livestock production. This is evident in the more than 644,000 metric tons of rice imported into the country last year. The ministry says it intends to achieve self-sufficiency in rice by 2018 and also reduce post-harvest losses of tomatoes. But the problem is, first of all, how to produce tomato in the off-season in order to take care of our population. And also during the time of glut, how we manage the post-harvest losses of the glut that is produced. So we have identified that uh, we can do this through protected systems. They are like greenhouses, but specially designed to simulate the microclimate required for tomato production. In order to upscale rice production, you need good seeds, high yielding seeds. So we are working with programs such as WAP, AGRA, and others in order to select rice varieties that do better than what we have now. At least from the 4.6 average per metric tons per hectare, we want to move it to about 6 metric tons per hectare. Generally, government seems to have a positive attitude towards the adoption of the genetic modification technology as one of the ways of addressing food security challenges in the country. GM is just one potential technology that can improve our productivity. And the ministry has adequate tools, regulations, instruments that can subject any technology that is the result of GM research to those tests on its merit before we can attempt to invite farmers to produce such varieties. Ghana is currently testing nitrogen and water efficient GM rice, pest and disease tolerant cowpea, as well as BT cotton. The ministry also says there has been increase in fish farming and aquaculture and a steady improvement in agriculture mechanization to propel production. Meanwhile, the Minister for Food and Agriculture has congratulated my colleague and, new, and Joy News' great reporter, Adley Datha, for winning the first runner-up in the television category of the AU Commission's Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Project Media Awards in South Africa recently. To declaration that um, requires that we allocate 10% of GDP annually to agriculture. I want to find out if Ghana is actually complying. If not, what is hindering us? Thank you. Adelaide Arthur, first of all, let me congratulate you for winning an award in South Africa under the Comprehensive African Agricultural Development Program, CADIP. I should have been there to support you, but my staff there we're there to support you. Congratulations. Yes, indeed, in the year 2003, the heads of states of most African countries met in Maputo, Mozambique, where they made certain declarations. They asked member countries to allocate a minimum of 10% of their annual budget to agriculture. Since then, Ghana has been doing its best to meet this target. Even though currently we are averaging 9% of the annual budget, from the explanation that I gave earlier that the agricultural sector is made up of five subsectors, we need to disaggregate this 9% according to those sectors that are within the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's control. And if we do that, we realize that the percentage is quite low. It's like 2% of the national budget which means that the cocoa sector and other sectors take the lion's share. Indeed, congratulations to Adelaide Arthur for being a part of the winning team. You're watching Joy News 